This is Greg, aka Crazy G, with NECR New England Concert Reviews, and today we have another phenomenal artist. He belongs to a band that includes Henry Derrick vocals, Sean Drova drums, and Chris Broderick guitar. He is a local guy from East Hampton, Mass, and he is in the heavy metal, thrash metal, shred band, Act of Defiance. He is Matt Bashand bassist. Hello? Welcome and thanks for hitting us up here at NECR. What's going on, man? Oh, not a whole lot, man. Just uh, trying to stay busy. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> oh, yeah. Why don't we start off by you telling us a little bit about Act of Defiance and how the band came to existence. Yeah, well, we, we, uh, we've been around for a couple years now. We do have a previous album out. Uh, it came out about two years ago. But basically, uh, how everything came together was um, Chris and Sean had left Megadeth and they didn't really intend on leaving together. It was just a coincidence, really. It was just one of those things where they were both thinking about it and just pulled the trigger at the same time, you know. But there were no intentions to form a band, and then they just got to talking, started doing that. Um, and uh, I've known Sean for a long, long time. He was Andy LaRock's guitar tech with King Diamond back in 2000 when Shadows Fall toured with King Diamond. So I've known Sean since then. It was as simple as, you know, they were looking for a bassist, and he knew, you know, normally I play guitar with Shadows Fall, but he knew that I played bass too in a cover band around here. And uh, pretty much called me one day and asked if I wanted to do it. Nice. And the whole lineup of this band is incredible. The band's second CD, Old Scars, New Wounds, is some heavy metal hardcore punishment. The entire CD is it's terrorizing, and it hits pretty damn hard. What would you like to tell us about this new CD, and being your second CD together, was it any different compared to the first, the debut, Birth and Burial, as far as the creative process goes? Oh, it's, it's very different in every way. Um, with the first record, Chris and Sean wrote the whole thing pretty much themselves you know they were out as soon as they were out with of Megadeth they were writing and they were moving along really really quickly now the whole record was pretty much done before I even stepped into the picture so you're getting you know just writing perspectives of, of two individuals whereas with this record everybody had input you know I have three full songs that I wrote on this record you know Henry's got a song on this record it's the dynamic is so much different because of that and having played with each other you know for the last two years on tour and things like that we really started to figure each other out as far as like writing styles and and what things would complement other things and we were really, uh, it was a very collaborative effort this time around. We could spend all night talking about this CD and all the tracks. One track, Overexposure, really buries the needle. What can you tell us about that song? That is actually the one song that Henry uh, wrote the, the lion's share of uh, on that record. And, um, you know, I, I love the fact that it, it's a little bit different from everything else on the record. And, and you know, it's, a, it's not, I wouldn't call it a departure from anything that we're normally trying to do. And none of this is intentional. You know, we're just writing songs that we feel at the time when we're feeling. Them. There's no, uh, oh, we have to write a song of this genre or of this genre and this and that. Um, you know, we just do what feels right at the time, and that one just it came out great. I don't really know what to say about it. You know, I'm very, very happy with, with that one because it you know, offers a little bit uh, of uh, variance to the rest of the songs as far as the tonal qualities and, and, and the style, really. Cool. Yeah, definitely. I have to agree with that for sure. The Talisman made my brain bleed. Probably <laughs> probably one of my favorites off of Old Sky's New Wounds. How is that? That track developed. That is one of my songs, actually. Nice. That is something. That's a snow day song. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, what happened was I, I got up to go to work in the morning, and I got a call from my boss saying, "Hey, there's two feet of snow outside. Don't come in today." So I thought we're, you know, we're in the process. And all right, I'm going to lock myself in the house, and I'm going to write a song today, you know, front to back. And uh, that's what came out. That's a killer track. It really is. I enjoyed it thoroughly, and I had to listen to it a few times, more than a few times. What I wanted to do with that one was another thing to add from some variety to this. You know, as we were going, we had a lot of Sean songs already done at that point, and a couple of Chris's tracks were done at that point. And there was a lot of fast, up tempo, thrashy stuff going on. And uh, I wanted that to be more like a, you know, Metallica's thing that should not be kind of vibe. You know, really kind of like sludge and doomy and give some variety to the album. So that that's kind of where my head was at with that one. That's a really cool track. I like it a lot. <laughs> one last track I want to touch upon is Another Killing Spring. That track is ruthless and vicious. What was the thought process for this song from the beginning? Uh, that is another one of my songs, yeah. Oh, um, look at that. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> 
you know, it's just, I think a lot of it and a lot of those tracks are just kind of writing wise, me just being pent up for so long, not writing, you know, like Shadows Fall hadn't been really particularly active in the last couple of years. Um, so I really, I, I just haven't been writing. So it, I was trying to just get it all out in one shot. And, you know, that's what came out. But that was coming from more of a, maybe like a hardcore sensibility, you know, something in, um, more like groove oriented, like with the verse riffs and things like that. Uh, I wanted to just, to just move like a freight train and not stop, you know? Yeah, I can see that. No, makes total sense. And by the way, I didn't know you wrote these two songs. So this actually, honestly and truthfully, was by chance. I loved all three of these songs that I chose. So that, that's fantastic. That's a pretty cool uh, thing right there. Other than you, I mean, the songs you wrote are great. What would you say is your preferred track to play off Old Scars, New Wounds, and why? Well, that, that's hard to say at this point because we've never actually played these songs together. <laughs> you know, being, being, you know, just spread out all over the country, we've never jammed these songs out in a live room setting. So it's kind of hard to tell at this point which ones are going to feel the best in a live scenario. But, you know, something like, I think something like, can't even think of it at this time. <laughs> I don't have it in front of me either right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, the one that's after the talisman. Um, so I've one of Chris's tunes and it just has a, just this vicious riff in it that I just love. This is my favorite part in the whole record. And, uh, you know, like, I feel like that's, that's going to be something that's going to be a really good time to play live. Are you guys on the road right now? You're doing uh, a little bit of a, a tour cycle, aren't you? A current tour cycle? No, no, we're doing nothing right now. Uh, we did have something lined up for October and it all fell through. Um, so right now it's kind of a scramble to get something put together. So I, I'm not sure when we're going to be out on the road, but hopefully sooner than later. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah definitely, man, because I want to catch you guys live. Is my understanding this was tracked, I mean, and you briefly touched upon it, this album was tracked in various areas of the country. According to some press, Broderick laid down the guitars in his own ill-fated studios in L.A. Derek and Broderick's vocals were tracked at Red Light Studios also in L.A., with Bashan tracking your contributions at Man Shark in Southampton, Mass., and drove his drums were laid down at Atlanta's Glow in the Dark Studios. What was that process like, and what can you tell us about it, and did it flow smoothly for all of you? Um, yeah, I think it did. I mean, it's a different way to work. I've never really, you know, with the exception of our previous album, have worked like this. I'm used to being in the studio with everybody, you know, hashing parts out. And uh, so it's, it's it was definitely different from the way I usually do things. But it wasn't particularly difficult because we spent so much time this time around going back and forth as far as, you know, let's call it pre-production, but just like over the phone, you know, kicking ideas around. Let's change this. Let's change the tempo of this song. Let's, uh, you know, little things like that that made all the difference. And we just did that remotely. And the fact that we can now just send tracks back and forth online is super convenient and really it's just there wasn't a budget in order to do that because you'd be spending so much money just between flights and hotels to get us all in the same place we would rather put that money back into the record and have better you know, quality product so we knew exactly what we were going to track once we were done we knew the parts so you know all of us didn't need to be in the same room sean knew exactly what he was going to play we knew what the arrangement was and the same thing for all the other parts we knew what was going to happen so it was pretty easy nice yeah no and again that makes perfect sense as you mentioned earlier when you were with Shadows Fall, you played guitar. Did you switch to bass because that's what Act of Defiance needed, or was this a move that you wanted to do anyways? No, it's, it's simply out of necessity. It's, you know, Act of Defiance was supposed to be a one guitar band, and it is, so, you know, it was the bass position that was available, so I jumped on it. I've been playing a lot of bass, you know, here and there. Like, I filled in for a tour with Haybreed playing bass, played bass with Times of Grace. Um, like I said, I played bass in a cover band around here, too, so it's not like it's anything particularly new to me. No, and uh, that's cool. It's it's great that you can be versatile like that. I think uh, anybody who can play more than one instrument got a hell of a lot more talent than I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought of the song title that I was talking about earlier. It's uh, Lullaby of Vengeance. Yes. That's the track. That's the track I was thinking of. Every track off that CD it hits you so hard. It's amazing what you guys produced doing it the way you did it. And do you think you guys, I mean, obviously, as you stated, Chris and Sean were doing a lot of writing, not to say that they still have some on the shelf, but do you guys plan to do that again, possibly the same way? Not not so much to save money, but it seemed to work very well for this CD. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it, we can't really say for sure now what's going to happen because, you know, we're still probably two years away from that happening. But um, we'll see what happens when the time comes. Uh, typically, it's difficult to write on the road simply because there's a lot of other stuff going on. There's press, there's meet and greets, there's just a lot of chaos going on. So it's really tough to kind of sit down and focus and, and write songs, So especially for me. So I tend to just write when I'm at home. So usually during a tour cycle, that's not very often. <laughs> so um, a lot of my writing actually happened all in one big chunk really really quickly but i feel like i work better under pressure you know if you give me a deadline i'll stick to it if you give me three years i'll wait till two days before it's due you know <laughs> I just, I, i'm like that with everything but it seems to work well that way so hey if it's not broke don't fix it right no and and you know what that i kind of live by that same credo i mean i like to be ahead of schedule but sometimes you just can't be and you gotta pump it out a couple i think we do better under the pressure you know what i mean mm -hmm. i can't Absolutely. I can't even imagine the pressure of you guys because, I mean, you have strict deadlines you have to follow. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, I like it that way. You know, that that's that's what gets you motivated is when you know you have to have something done by a certain time. You make damn sure you get it done. Who are some of your musical influences and do you draw anything from their arc? I think those are always involved in anything that you do. Uh, but, um, I mean, a lot of my stuff, was, like, when, you know, when I first started playing it early on, I was really influenced by a lot of the death metal scene, the New York scene, the Florida scene, all those you know, earlier bands, you know, the Obituaries, Campbell Corpse, Morbid Angel, Suffocation, all those types. Uh, I was really, really into that, still am. But I'm also into, I listen to a lot of like New Age and classical music as well as, as you know, guitar playing wise, people like Mark Knopfler or David Gilmore. It just, it, there's a lot to offer in all of these genres, you know, and taking just melodies and ideas and, and just, you know, influencing what comes out of you. You run it through the process, see what comes out, you know. So it's, I'm sure it's there, you know, you're not consciously thinking about it, saying, I'm going to write a song that sounds like this or whatever, but it, it just kind of happens because, you know, you know, if it's what you're into, it's what you're hearing in your head. You guys are highly talented, and I can't give music artists enough credit because I'll tell you, I wouldn't even know where to begin even thinking of writing a song. <laughs> so, you know, no, that, that's great, and I give you all the credit in the world. You deserve it, man, because I would like to think it's tough, you know, but obviously somebody that is well-versed as yourself probably snap of the fingers, boom, it's done, you know? Well, you know, everyone's got to be good at something. You know, I can't build you a house, but there are a ton of people out there that can. Exactly. I love that philosophy, man. So true. So true. Matt, we touched upon quite a bit. Is there anything I left out or is there anything else you want to share with us? Not only about yourself, but about active defiance we may not know about. I think you pretty much covered the basis. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, we're just, you no, know, this isn't, I think that maybe people thought when the first album came out that it was just a quote unquote super group and that it was, you know, a one off kind of thing. But this, this is not that kind of project. It is a full-on band, and we're going for it full force. So, you know, we're going to keep doing it as long as we can. So hopefully we can get everyone out there to see us on tour when we hit the road. And uh, I appreciate all your support. No problem. Anytime, Matt. At this time, I want to say thank you. NECR thanks you. I wish you the best with Active Defiant and the new CD, Old Scars and New Wounds. And, uh, you know, you guys getting on tour. And keep putting this stuff out because I'll tell you, man, you, you rip it to shreds. And uh, I love it. It's powerful. It's energetic. It gets your blood moving, and I hope to hear a lot more from Active Defiance and uh, you in the future. You certainly will. All right, excellent, man. Again, thanks, Matt. Thank you. Have a good one, and the best to you, man. All right, take care, ladies and gentlemen. That was bassist Matt Bashan for the heavy metal, thrash metal, shred band Active Defiance. Check them out. New CD, Old Scars, New Wounds. It'll rip your face off. Check them out on. Online, Facebook, Act of Defiance, New CD, Old Scars, New Wounds. It'll melt your face for sure. This is Greg, a.k.a. Crazy G for NECR New England Concert Reviews, and I am out of here. Have a good one, and I'll be back. Peace. Later.